I'm Randall Funston with Van Bortel, and I just wanted to talk about why I feel as though the Turbo 182 is the best value of any airplane you can buy out there. The 182 has been in production for almost 70 years. One of the best safety records on the planet. They're easy to fly. It's an airplane that you might have a guy that wants to get into aviation and he buys his trainer, completes his training, sells that. Now I'm gonna get my travel airplane that I'm gonna continue my flying with. Well, you, you could actually do it all with a 182. It's not too much airplane to learn in. It has great payload and speed, room in the cabin to really fulfill a lot of needs for a long time, if not forever in the cases of some pilots. That's the 182 in general. You can start off with differences in the Turbo 182. It is Lycoming TIO 540 engine, so it's a 235 horsepower engine. Now the TIO 540 is in a lot of different airplanes and some variations put out as much as 350 horsepower. It's putting out 235 horsepower on this airplane and why that's important is it's a heavily derated engine. We had one come through a few months back. It had 2,700 hours on the engine, never even did a cylinder. So you may be wondering how to spot the difference between a turbo 182 and a naturally aspirated 182. There are a few differences, but they're pretty small. But if you'll look, on the turbo 182, you'll have prop de-ice boots, which you don't have on naturally aspirated models. It comes in very handy if you get an icing situation. The last thing you want to ice up is your prop. There's an additional inlet here on the right-hand cowling. And you'll see most of the time the letters TC on the tail below the word Skylane, standing for turbocharged. Additionally, with the Turbo 1A2, you'll have built-in oxygen. That's really nice to have. The bottle is in the tail. You have four ports that you can plug into up in the ceiling of the cabin. So you have oxygen on board. So you may be on a trip going somewhere and there might be a, you know, a little rainstorm or something like that you want to get on top of or over. You might not have planned on doing that but you can do it in the turbo. You can climb right up there, throw your oxygen on, and keep on going along your trip above the weather, out of the bumps, in nice smooth air with a lot better true air speed. So I don't just want to sit here and talk about the Turbo 182 sitting on the ground. Let's take it on the flight. Yeah, we're, we're in a Turbo 182, so t we're going to demonstrate the performance of it at higher altitude. So we're going to go up to 17,500 feet and see what it does up there. You know, it's a little bit warmer of a day, whether it's a warmer day or your higher elevation, any, any situation where the density altitude gets a little bit higher, that's where these really shine. So it doesn't matter, you know, it's, I'll have customers down in Florida, do I need a turbo? Well, you know, you're in South Florida, it's hot, it's humid and all that stuff. And it, it just adds a lot of performance and compensates for that density altitude, whether it be hot temps or higher elevation. So. I would have to say the best all-around airplane that we carry. I mean, it's it's a four-passenger airplane. You have tons of room in the back seat, lots of baggage, easy to fly. They're safe, turbocharged, built-in oxygen. For somebody that wants a more an everyday airplane to do a lot of missions really well, the Turbo 182 is it. Okay, power's good. Oil pressure's good. That was about probably six, seven hundred feet. Check eleven forty-three. Wow. Motor runway three four on Alpha, ready for southbound departure with a short delay. Yep. It gets off the the ground really quick, and that was with ten degrees flaps. It'll be even faster with twenty that you can use on a short field takeoff. If you know you you don't see yourself you know flying around with more than four people, you know the the one eighty two is perfect for that. So for most people, the one eighty two. Uh, fits their needs really well. It's probably why, you know, the 182, especially the Turbo 182, is, you know, the most popular airplane on the planet. One of the common misconceptions I get from, from a lot of prospective customers is they think that because the airplane's turbocharged, it's more complicated. In reality, it's simpler. Everything's all this, it's still a 182. It flies the same and all that good stuff. The reason why it's simpler is in a non-turbo airplane, a naturally aspirated airplane, you have to, as you're climbing like we are, going up to altitude, as you're getting into the thinner air, you're having to continue to lean the, you know, lean the airplane back for best performance. You don't have to do that in the turbo. It's always the same amount of air in the engine. So, you know, you can keep your power setting where you want it for your climb power setting and not even touch it all the way up. And it's the same on your descent. Naturally aspirated, 
you have to remember to continue to enrich it as as you continue to go down in your descent. Um, and it's the opposite of what we talked about a little bit ago. As you're going back down, the air gets thicker. You got to give it more fuel. Um, the turbo, you don't have to do that. Same amount of air, so you can wherever you're leaned back to where you were in cruise, you can keep it right where it was all the way through your descent until before you land. So operating the airplane is simpler. Another reason why the Turbo 182 is so simple is they also have an automatic wastegate. So you don't have to be as careful about over boosting the engine or anything like that. All we're doing here is we're just setting the flow meter for our altitude. Uh, so I, I'll just set it at 20,000. We're just gonna go to 17.5, but a little bar air never hurt anybody. So that's really it. So it, it plugs in right here to that port. You turn the system on, you set the flow to wherever you want it, and you're done. So we just left 12,500. We're leaving actually 12,700 now. Climbing at 700 feet a minute, oxygen is on. Um, airplane is performing great as they do. So on our way to 17 five. I'll get questions from customers or what's the purpose of going up higher? Well, I like 17,000 a lot for a couple of reasons. Um, you don't have to have a full mask on. You could just use a cannula, so it's not very invasive. You can clear any obstacle of the country at that altitude. So you know, depending on where you're going, you can cross the Rockies, you can do a lot of things at 17,000. Makes the flying a lot easier. Not to mention, you know, if you have certain types of weather systems, rainstorms, um, 17 a lot of times will get you over that and over the top of it. So you don't have to ride down in the middle of it. The air is thinner up high. You have less drag on the airplane. Your true airspeed is gonna be higher. So if you're going from west to east, a lot of times you can pick up a great tailwind up higher. And it's not a common, you can say your your true airspeed is gonna be 170 knots, you know, 17,000 feet. You add a 50 knot tailwind to that, and you know, you're doing 220 across the ground. That, that's pretty good for a skyline. So here we are at 17,500 feet. It is a little warmer than standard on the temperature. We are cheering at 168 knots, ground speed of 193. We got up here really quick. It was very simple. I set the power for climb. Didn't even have to touch it all the way up. Set it up for cruise and we are above the clouds. We're above, we're not bouncing around at those. The air is nice and smooth. If we could sit up here with the range of the, tur the Turbo 182, uh, as far as the fuel capacity, the endurance that they have, we can go up long, long ways up here. Right now I'm demonstrating what's really nice about the higher flap speeds of the 182. I, I could put 10 degrees flaps down up to 140 knots. I don't have to pull a lot of power back, so we keep the keep the, the engine nice and warm. You know, you, you do hear of shock cooling and stuff like that. Well, that's very easily avoidable in this airplane. Um, we're at the setting at 900 feet a minute. Uh, I, don't, I set the speed to 135 knots. I'm not adding to enriching as we go down. As I mentioned before, it's turbocharged, it's the same amount of the air of the engine. So as the air continues to increase its density as we're going down, we don't have to change anything. Set the descent power setting, I leave it there, and that's it. We left 12,500 a little bit ago, so we just took the oxygen on. Descending out of 10,500 now. I'm going down at 800 feet if they didn't. Uh, still have not had an with mixture or any kind bad. So you've heard me talk about the lack of having to, you know, adjust mixture. Uh, throughout this and but it's, it's just to show is when you when you tell somebody the turbo 182 is simpler to fly than non-turbo it's like they don't believe you because other than that the whole airplane's pretty much the same but because of that because of the less things you have to do with the climb and descent it truly is easier and simpler than the non-turbo um, overall the 182 in general non-turbo or turbo they're simple, they're easy, they're safe. I mean, they're just, they're, they're incredible. Reasons why it does so many things great. They're easy to fly. As you just saw, great speed for going cross country. Lots of room, great useful load. They can take off short, they can land short. 
They're very maintenance friendly. Here, if I've been in production for 60 some odd years, everybody knows how to work on them. Other than a lot of advancements like they've got the avionics and interior, aerodynamic upgrades and things like that, it is still the great 182 that's been around for a long time. And that's one of the reasons why insurance is so kind to elders on them, because they're not expensive to insure at all. If you have any additional questions, um, I encourage you to visit our website at vanbortle.com and uh, look forward to hearing from some of you guys and thanks for watching.